Well, would you look at that there? I'm going to step out of the picture, but check out this old car here. 1968 firework called the Great Pumpkin. I'm telling you, she has come a long, long way. We're getting ready to do the final paint job, doing all the edging, get everything dialed in. We're going to try to do our best not have any visible or noticeable tape lines. And I can't say there won't be tape lines, but we're going to hide them so good that you'll have to really try hard to find them. And because it's just call it what it is, I'm not that good of a painter where I can put this car completely together paint it and make it all look seamless to get the metallic laid out i just i just don't have that ability and of course i'm doing it in a two-car garage so we're going to do all the edging as you can see here behind me we're going to hang all the panels back on and then we're going to come through and it's kind of like a back tape just on the edges and it should leave a soft line or a non-visible line wherever we've actually got it taped off so basically all the tape lines are hidden we won't have any blend lines at least that's the goal we're hoping for i was working on putting the front fenders on and i realized that maybe you guys want to see some of the things behind the scenes how to get a front fender on particularly a 67 or 68 fiber putting them on eh, they, they're kind of a chore sometimes but there's some things that i'm going to show you to make your life easier and of course we got to be careful not to chip the paint here on the front of the door or on the back of the fender i went ahead and did some painting on the fender so they're ready to be reinstalled and i've done a few other things here behind the scene that i'm going to show you as we're getting things prepped for paint and then we'll go ahead and start getting that fender put on well let's start with the front fenders what i did if you look at the fender we actually have a separation line here um, so you can see what it is. I taped it off. So we've painted the main part frame of the fender. So once it's bolted on, we're going to tape from here and paint from here up as one continuous piece. Now I can have a tape line here on the inside of the fender. I just don't like that. So we're trying to get away from or to prevent that from happening. So that's one of the things I did on the fender. And then the, the edge there, the door jam edge, I went ahead and painted it to see why I had stuff mixed up. So now I'm going to work on getting the fenders reinstalled, but you can see the driver's side exactly what i'm talking about see that's all perfectly painted got the shims all in all dialed in i don't have to worry about trying to paint that and make it look good and the entire car at the same time i got a nice brake line right there um and i'm not sure about leaving the hood on the car yet or not i'm still kind of on the fence i may put the hood on but if not you can see when i go to paint this car have it all masked off paint over there over the fender no problem whatsoever and of course we've already got the door jams all painted pretty and nice cowling looks really fantastic and I'm, i got kind of an idea here that i need to identify this car or something that i built but other things that kind of done behind the scenes well you guys have seen this but look at the steering i went ahead and finished it up too because i kind of had some free time between projects so it's all back together and looking fantastic uh, the rear i went ahead and did the autumn bronze trim here in the back going with the theme of the instead of the black dash autumn bronze dash well basically all the black metal parts originally black on the interior went ahead and did autumn bronze go ahead and just go ahead and blew some paint here in the window channel too to make my life a little easier so what we're going to do next here is getting the fender put on a few things to keep in mind now that's 67 and i guess 68 these nuts are actually part of the fender so make sure they're good in good shape you'll have two style here for like the uh, three eighths bolts or five sixteenths bolts and you have two here for the screws for the turn signal lens. So you gotta make sure those are put in first where you put it on. Now my inner fender, I put these bolts in here, but they're loose. I can still move this thing around if I have to. It's not secured down super tight. Now what I've done here is I put some tape on the inner fender. So when I go to put the fender on, I don't scratch the paint up real bad. And since this stuff that we've already learned, this green paint doesn't stick to anything, well, that's just fine. It'd be easy to peel back off. So you can see I have that here uh, on the front and those back spots there. Now the fenders here, I've got them in here, not tightened down, just snug so it can kind of float if it needs to. Um, now what you'll have down here, you'll have a larger cage nut, go ahead and put it on there. Fender well lines up and you got your rear mount bolt here. Now I have the bolts sorted out here. You'll have five that are actually longer, uh, quite a bit longer actually, but they're gonna go obviously here, one, two, three, and then there's four and five. And I also have the two bolts that go in here, and they have like a cup style washer that actually ties the inner fender to the fender. And that's all the hardware I have kind of laid out up here ready to go, so we're ready to put that on there. But one of the things I'm going to do, since we're going to paint this car assembled, I'm going to go ahead and tape the leading edge of this door off, kind of like with a little flap on it, basically. So as I open the door to paint the rear door jam, then when I shut it, it comes back up and kind of touches against the fender, so I don't get overspray in here. All the stuff I've already got all detailed and looking really nice. So the next thing I'm going to work on doing, I'm just going to tape off the leading edge of this door because it's a lot easier now with the fender off, and then we'll get the fender installed. All right, what we're going to do, we're going to use some of the good blue tape here. On a little strip. And we're going to essentially just put it on the back side of the door here. Leave about a quarter inch hanging off. And we'll come back with another piece of tape. 
There we go. Like so. And of course, this tape sticks really good because it's got nice new clean paint on the inside. Now this is only just for the purpose of painting once the car is assembled. Because I just don't know if I can get my hands in here to really get this taped off kind of like I want to. They make products for this, like little foam stuff for body working, but back to that whole thing, and I'm just too cheap. Um, this this will work. Alright, now because here's what we gotta do. We gotta get paint on the leading edge of this door, but I don't want to blow all the paint deep inside here in the door jam mess it all up. So the idea is this way I can actually kind of hit the door jams and work out pretty good now. Um, this is the tape here. This is another piece, sticky to sticky. Line it up about like so. I'm just going to fold this over. And we can see then, that'll keep folded back and stick. But then when I open and shut the door, it kind of like a little flap to help kind of prevent the paint from going inside the door jam. So I'll get this all taped up here and we'll get the fender ready to go on. All right, now what that looks like up close, you can see the tapes fold over. It's not the sticky side hanging out. So as this door opens and shuts, it, it's flexible. It won't stick to the fender, but it should be out far enough. As you can tell, it'll actually lay up against the edge of the fender and fill in our gap. So that's going to work out really nice. The next thing we're going to is getting the fender put on, but I got kind of a crazy idea for this right here. And what I'm actually thinking of, this little silver marker, we're going to go ahead and do something here along the lines of V... V, G, 20, 23, we'll put Great Pumpkin. Now, nobody's ever going to see this, but me and you and anybody who watches the show. But that's just kind of one of those funny things. This car gets taken apart in the future. Someone's going to be left scratching their head. Okay, well, I'm going to get ready to grab the fender, but I'm going to kind of show you the idea what's popping from my head, what seems to work, is we're going to grab this fender. It has that little part here that has to go around the blower motor housing up here against the firewall. So as you bring it in, you kind of kind of hook it in here and slide it back. But the fender also goes on the bottom side of this wheel well. So you kind of got to hook the wheel up. That's probably the reason why you leave it loose. You have a little bit of adjustability and wiggle room until you get the fender installed. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that fender. Watch me go say it. I'll kind of hook it here first, slide it back. And the goal is not to bang it off the front edge of this door because this is all body worked and ready. Now, same idea, this is already painted. Last thing you want to do is chip up the paint and damage it. But we're going to get that fender, see if we have any luck here today. And here we go. I'm going to hook down here by the heater box in first. And slide it straight back. Now we're kind of sort of roughed into place. It's just kind of resting in here. Now I'm sitting above the wheel well as you can see there. So what I need to do now is get the wheel well wrestled up inside the fender. Now I get you up here close. You can see it's kind of resting into place. Got it tucked over the heater box like we need to do. Slid that thing over that. And this is what the tape is for. It keeps this from scratching the heck out of our nicely finished inner fender well. So that's the tape's gonna insulate here. Now the part we're gonna be fighting though this is the inner fender well. It needs to tuck up inside the fender. So back here is fine. But we start to see here, I need to start getting that fender to go back up inside the inner fender, go inside the actual outer fender here. So I'll work on getting that kind of pushed into place while pushing the fender back just a little bit and hope we get it all hooked because we got quite the difference here right now. Okay, now. Now, you get the fender bolted up into place. Now, down here on the floor, my test fit everything, there's the shims that go up here in the top part of the fender. 
that should be the exact same shim height. They don't need to reconfigure, refigure all that out. So I want to open the door slowly. I got to hold the fender up so I don't tear the edges of the paint up here. And then get the door open, get the bolt started. I use one of these new bolts here. And then get those shims put in place. And then what all I have to do is fine tune forward and back it up. And I don't have to worry about the in and out because I already know from the previous assembly of the car, that's the shims that I need. Now the cool thing about the passenger side is antenna hole. If you have a front mounted antenna, you can actually use that to hold the fender out and get the door open. Okay, now we'll get in here, start my bolt. And it's a 916th wrench fits that. Here's what I've done. Those are the three shims I had originally laid out when I dry fit this car for our first go around. Um, took it apart because look at this door jam. This is why I took it apart to paint it. So this door jam almost looks like perfect. This is the best that I could paint it. It's going to look like a, you know, a very expensive paint job, but we're just doing it here at home. But these are the little details that really set it off. And now my shims will be this color. The bolt head will be black, so to how it is from the factory. And even the same thing is going to happen here under the hood. This is all painted body color, and the bolts are going to be that black oxide look all the way across the whole fender. So it's going to look like the car was taken apart and painted. So it's really going to make the thing look like a super high-end paint job, but I'm painting here in my crappy garage. But I shouldn't call it crap. This garage is pretty awesome. We're doing some pretty cool things and sharing it with you. Now, I guess rambling on, I'm going to shut the door to see how close we are. And then what we'll do, we'll go from there, adjust it as needed, but we'll get the door resting here in the shut position. And, well, my line is right on the money. So I don't need to move the fender up and down. And then my gap is actually pretty good. I think I just need to pull the bottom fender in and put our bottom bolts in. It may actually get us where we need to be. I'm going to climb down here at the bottom and put these bolts in here. Um, now, the thing of it is, there's actually a space between the body and the fender. Now, if I were to put that bolt in, and tighten it up, it actually causes this fender to bulge out. So I need to find some shims and stack them up just slightly thicker than the gap I have here currently. So when I tighten it down, it keeps the fender at the same height because right now it's it's actually pretty much there. It just needs a little bit of uh, movement out, I think, and down. So I need to make sure I shim a little bit heavy and then tighten it up and it should pull everything right into place. A cool angle for you, but what we're gonna do we got to get this out of that space here. I've got two one eighth inch shims. I'm going to wedge between the fender and the body. And that should be a little bit snug. And that'll pull the fender down. And I can push it back in. It should get us pretty close. I'm going to get the bolt started here. That'll help keep the shims in alignment. Now, I actually had this shimmed up before, but I didn't lay the shims out. Now, if I had been a little smarter about it, I probably could have done that. But these typically aren't too bad to adjust. And unfortunately, this bottom bolt hole is actually really in fantastic shape. Sometimes these are all rusted up and busted and sad, but this one's actually in pretty good condition. So now, that's going to pull the fender down. I've got, it looks like pretty good down here. I'm going to get this bolt snugged up. And then the front, similar situation. I'm going to get the bolt started here. Now the front, though, I'm gonna take a straight edge run down the rocker panel and hit the front of this fender because I've got, you know, quarter inch of movement in and out. I wanna make sure my rocker panel and my fender are on the same plane. So I'm gonna grab my straight edge and we'll snug up that bolt too. All right, what I'm talking about here, I'm getting my seven foot level, rest it up against the rocker panel. As long as my fender front edge is hitting here and here, I say that'll work just fine. So I'll go ahead and snug these bolts out really tight because there's no reason to take this thing back apart. Now that's not going to go anywhere. Now the front of it, that's a different story. All right, now we have going on under the hood. Got a couple of things I still need yet to do. There's a nut that goes here and a nut that goes here. I like to refurbish or recondition the original square shaped nuts. The replacement kits come with a, oh, a U nut that looks okay, but these are kind of right in front of your face. I kind of like them to look original. So I'll salvage a couple of them if I can and position them into these spots here. And then we'll go ahead and reuse those put that one in place that one in place so i can get the bolt started but at this point 
I really can't tighten up anything. I'm going to leave that stuff back there tight because I don't want the fender to move in, out, up, and down. But the front here, well, I've even got the core support hardware is still loose. And the mounting nuts here that actually hold the inner fender to the core support, same thing, it is all loose. I need to get the hood installed next, but that's going to be a video for another day. And of course, now with the fender installed, I guess I should have done this too. I can get rid of the tape. It can go away now. So. Hey, there you go. Fender installed on the Great Pumpkin. So basically the front sheet metal, I got to put the lower valence fender drop-offs back on the car. Um, those are little things I'll probably just go ahead and throw in and really not overly complicated install those things. And then before we paint it, I still need to paint the inside of the hood um, back to like a semi-gloss black like I've used under the hood here on the fender wells and the firewall. And then I got to paint the inside of the trunk deck. And after that, it's game on. Time to put some color on this car here, and you don't want to miss that thing getting painted and looking fantastic. So if you haven't subscribed, hit that button right now for me. Help me out. And, of course, you guys have been following this thing from the very beginning. It's about time, John. You're going to put some color on that thing, but it's all these little things getting up to the point to get it ready to paint. I know it takes a little longer. It may seem a little bit tedious, but it's going to make for a super clean, best possible paint job we can get here inside this two car garage and i assure you when it's done as long as everything goes as i hope it will definitely stand up to any car at a show of field and look really good and you're not gonna know that it was painted in a two car garage besides as you saw it happen here on the youtube so nonetheless i'll uh, i'm not sure what i'll do for a video on the hood maybe maybe not paint the trunk deck on the inside i don't know but those are some of the behind the scenes things i may just knock out and the next video may be us actually painting this bad boy. So I appreciate you following me on the journey. I will grab the camera, whatever the heck we're doing, and uh, we will see you then.